Hello everybody and welcome back. I am KRX and this will be a tutorial series on Traffic Manager Mod and hopefully each episode will be rather concise. I mean that's going to be, that's always my goal. I say that every time and it never is. And uh, so once you subscribe to and activate Traffic Manager Mod, you get into the game, you're probably going to notice this button. You've probably seen this button before, maybe on a YouTube video or a stream. And when you click it, it opens up this menu, and you can drag all this stuff around however you want. And these are the these are the different actual tools. This is our toolkit, our toolbar, our tool belt, however you want to look at this. This is the tools that we have as we're playing the game to manipulate and set the rules for traffic. But there's a whole nother world of Traffic Manager mod before you even look at any of this stuff, and that's what we're going to be looking at today, actually. So these are the, the, these are the actual moment-to-moment -moment gameplay affecting elements of Traffic Manager mod. But before we even look at that stuff, there's actually an entire amount of customization in the settings that we can actually do. So here are like, you know, here are the mod, you know, a bunch of mods installed, doesn't even matter, completely irrelevant, but any of the mods that you have installed that also have sort of overarching customization, or maybe some of them like, you know, we've looked at Move It before, right? So Move It has hotkeys and things like that, and, and so on and so forth. So these are the mod settings, and we'll notice that there is one for, there, there's, there's something here for Traffic Manager mod, and there's a bunch of different tabs here, right? A bunch of different tabs, and for the most part, you can leave this relatively default, but there's a few things that we're going to highlight that you can make a decision on whether you'd like to use or not. And you can also just go through and, you know, some of these things are quality of life or ease of access or visual things in terms of how the mod presents itself, and, you know, in terms of locking it or making it more transparent and stuff like that, right? Some general stuff that you could do here just to make it easier to, to tune it how you want. Just lots of good customization. Always nice to have. Um... Then we kind of get down into, okay, the simulation. So this is like, essentially, if you have a lot of the advanced features turned on, this, you know, the, the, the mod can tax your computer. And by turning this down a bit, it's just going to kind of be a little bit more lackadaisical about implementing the various AI changes and stuff like that that you're going to be imposing later on as, as we go through these different tabs here and stuff like that. Usually, I've always left this on very high. It's on very high by default. I've never turned it down. Um, there, I, more often than not, I actually disable certain AI adjustments at the core rather than actually just, uh, uh tuning this particular thing. Cause I'd rather like the AI, uh, do what I want it to do and be accurate or just not actually have the mod be affecting those things at all. I have turned this off though. Customizations come into effect instantly. So, so this is when you're making those adjustments with the toolkit and the different tools and stuff like that. If you have this, if you have this on, then the AI has to immediately start obeying the new rules of the road. If you have this off, it'll so the AI will sort of like, you know, it'll wait till like new vehicles spawn to follow the rules of the road. So the vehicles that are already in motion will just keep doing what they were going to do anyways. So this definitely can affect performance, but I, by default, have it on. I've turned it off before to see if it helped. Um, because at the end of the day, if you're just kind of casually playing, it doesn't really matter if the effects take place instantly or eventually, right? Gameplay is really, this is this is where the meat of, of some of the overarching um, customization that we can do. And actually, by default, all this is going to be turned off. So let's let's turn all this stuff off by default and look at this. So, and the cool thing is you can actually custom, you can have parking AI turned on for this save file and then have a completely different save file or a, dis, a different city that has it turned off. And when you load each of those cities, it'll remember what you had turned on. So these settings that we do are specific to this save file. So that we can we can customize these things based on the city that we're actually currently working on. We don't really have to worry about how it's going to like you know memorizing all of what we did here and and then how that affect another city that we're working on in tandem or older save files loading up older save files. We don't have to worry about it because because this the adjustments we're breaking right now are tied to the save file tied to this specific city. Vehicle behavior. This is a this is one I've always kept it on Holy City. Uh, it is kind of one of those things where it's like, oh, whoa, path of evil, 10%. What does this mean? You know, basically this means that if you have these different settings on, there is a chance that the vehicles will disobey the, the rules that you impose with the toolkit, right? The toolkit, you're going to be actively imposing uh, traffic rules and traffic laws. 
And the AI, if you have this reckless driving turned on, it just means that some of the vehicles will essentially cheat the system and do what they want to do and dis disobey the rules of the road. So obviously, if you're trying to meticulously set up a system to improve traffic flow, having cars just randomly disregarding all of your customization in game is kind of counterintuitive a little bit. Maybe having it like on 2% is realistic because some cars are going to do weird stuff in real life or get caught in a situation and then they have to like swing over and, and make illegal left turns or right turns and stuff like that because they don't know what they're doing and they're, you know, they're from out of town or something like that, right? So, so maybe it is realistic to have some of the cars doing a little bit. So you could decide to turn that on if you want. I don't because I'd rather the cars... I'm more playing this from a game perspective and I just want to like... To, to fiddle through uh, the traffic improvements and know that the, the, the AI can be depended on and it can be trusted, right? And, it, you know, there's different things that you can read here and, and try to activate. And some of these things I've played around with and some of these things I haven't. Uh, disabled uh, despawning, this is something that I usually activate. So in the base game, when cars get stuck, they just eventually despawn after a certain amount of time. And that just kind of keeps things flowing. This is why in the base game, traffic management is not really a necessity. Um, because ultimately the game will just kind of cycle through and take care of itself. It does it, it does it really, you can't have, um, traffic really becoming like completely gridlock in the base game because it will just despawn eventually. So by disabling despawning, you've essentially made it so that any traffic flaws that you have in your city and the design of your city or in, you know, ways that you've messed up with traffic manager mod or whatever or improved, it's going to directly be affected, um, Basically, you're going to notice those things. Those things are going to stick out like sore thumbs because the vehicles will not be able to despawn their way through the system <laughs> effectively. Like vehicles get stuck, and when they're stuck, you're going to have to go through and work through that system. So this highlights your traffic flaws better by having disabled despawning activated. So I like to have that on. Advanced Vehicle AI, this is a big one. A lot of people think they download, they hear about the Advanced Vehicle AI. They're like, oh, Traffic Manager Mod helps cars use multiple different lanes. It improves the vehicle AI. But they always forget to come in here and turn this on. This is this is a big, big one that people forget to activate. Traffic Manager doesn't do anything to the AI if you don't turn this stuff on, right? By itself, the AI is not affected. You're still going to get conga lines of cars on the freeways unless you activate this enable advanced vehicle AI. And then this dynamic, it, it basically you can see that this allows you to then slide this bar around to get different dynamic lane selection. This means that some cars will dynamically or randomly actually, they will randomly choose different lanes when they're traveling from point A to point B if it still gets them from point A to point B. So this means when you have those larger boulevards that have multiple lanes or on the freeways especially this is very good for freeway traffic cars will distribute themselves across the available lanes and then sort of you know pull over you know you you know cut over when they need to get off and stuff like that it, it, there's a randomness to it essentially is what it does is it makes the ai make some random decisions but ultimately um, you can set this higher or lower. Having it high, I've never uh, seen anyone go higher than 50% with this. The higher, the better, but also it's very, very performance intensive to go all the way up because this is like a percentage of cars that this is acting upon. So it's very CPU intensive to have this at higher percentages. I've had it as high as 50% before, but usually I kind of like peel it back down to 20, 25% and just have it working sort of in the background to help distribute cars. Most of the time when I'm trying to get better lane usage, I work with the tools that the traffic manager gives us rather than actually working with um, de relying on the vehicle AI. But this can make an immediate difference, just turning on advanced vehicle AI. Uh, parking AI, this is a big one. Uh, sometimes you might see people making parking lots and you wonder why are they making parking lots? You don't need to do parking in the base game. If you turn this on, you have to have parking lots because the AI does no longer no longer has pocket cars. They no longer just keep the cars in their pocket and pull it out when they want. They need to actually park their cars to go to the shops to, you know, when they go home, when they go to the public transit, they have to leave their car there and stuff like that. So this essentially this more realistic parking basically means that you have to build parking lots for these major areas. But more importantly than that, it means that the AI is going to use the parking lots that you build. So there's nothing that warms my heart more than seeing a filled parking lot. And we'll be doing a parking tutorial in the future, so stay stay tuned for that, because that actually is one of the biggest questions that I get uh, during the Twitch streams is related to parking. Like, how do I make parking lots? Why are people parking in my parking lots? How did I get them to do that? Stuff like that, right? 
Um, and then there's uh, public transit, uh, prevent unnecessary transfers at public transit stations. That sounds like a good thing. I don't know what this actually does. I don't know why there would be unnecessary transfers at public tr transport stations, but there you go. Uh, so you can activate this stuff or deactivate this stuff. Just keep in mind that this does affect performance. Um, there's different uh, settings here. Um, this one is one that's off by default, but I usually turn it on. You can see I've already actually activated this one. Buses may ignore lane arrows. This is a big deal. And also in real life, I think there's some uh, some precedent for something like a setting like this because buses do need to be able to make turns at areas that turns are usually not allowed. You'll see sometimes it will say like no turns except for buses, right? Because buses have routes to do and they have to be swinging around and, and going over, over the place and hitting their stops and stuff like that. So buses... Giving buses the ability to ignore lane arrows is kind of a really, really nice feature actually in the game. It actually manifests this really cool thing in the game too. Otherwise, the buses sometimes have to go around in weird ways and stuff like that. So there's other things here. Uh, vehicles may enter blocked junctions. This is, I mean, some of these things, you might want to turn these things on. Vehicles going straight on may change lanes at junctions. I definitely don't want that turned on, but someone might want this turned on, right? So this is those crazy people in real life, right, that are changing lanes as they're going through junctions. Like, uh, how annoying are these people in real life, right? But you can activate these people in the game if you wanted to, you know? So... So basically, you can go through and read these different things and just think about, okay, what does this stuff mean? Like, and, and apply sort of your real-world understanding to know how it's going to work in the game. So this makes a more realistic uh, potential traffic experience if you, if you want that, right? These are just overlays. These are so you can activate things so you can see, like, speed limits so that I can go around um, in the map and actually see the speed limits on the roads, like as an overlay, as sort of like a map mode. These are like map modes, right? So I've never used any of these before, but they're there. There's some maintenance stuff if, in case things start breaking or getting stuck and stuff, like removed parked vehicles. If things are going haywire, you could play around with the maintenance and stuff and maybe try to fix something that, that's going on, some sort of issue or some sort of bug that's going on. I've never gone to the maintenance section. I've never gone to the overlay section. I really only hit a couple things in here usually, but these are all options for you to go in and customize uh, the various things with Traffic Manager Mod. And that's basically the settings, right? Just going through and deciding, okay, do you want to disable despawning? Do you want to enable the advanced vehicle AI? Are you going to be doing parking lots? If you're not going to be building parking lots, you definitely do not want this activated. That's why it's off by default. You know, do you want a few cars that kind of, you know, go their own way and do their own path and stuff like that? So that's essentially the traffic manager mod settings, right? That's the that's sort of step one to setting up the mod to customizing it how you want. And then you, as you play the game, you will constantly be going back to this menu here to actually apply the tools that it gives you to set down those traffic rules in the game, right? Here we have speed limit adjustments, we have vehicle restrictions, we have ju uh, junction restrictions, we have lane arrows that we can do, time traffic lights, we have priority signs, on and on and on and on. It just, it just like the amount of potential that this mod has for managing and customizing your traffic flow is insane. And we're going to start looking at these different features in depth in isolated videos and how, and some examples on how they can be utilized in the future episodes. So thank you so much, everybody, for watching. We are ready to go. We have laid down the groundwork for Traffic Manager Mod. Now we can begin the short, concise episodes for the different toolkit tools going forward for Traffic Manager Mod Present Edition. So thank you so much, everybody. I will see you guys in the next one.